Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit, it's summer, I know what I'm doing, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. Armed with new information about how to do Omnifactory well, a lot of time, and some cool ideas, hopefully we'll be able to have a lot of fun playing this mod pack over the summer when I don't know how productive I'll actually be. So, let's begin right away with a world called New Omnifactory Super Shorts. Uh, the topography of a world type spawns you in a world that's full of lost cities, um, but it also gives you access to the void world. But you need to use the topography world type to get into Void World, or else you'll have to use a secret trick that you can learn by going onto the Omnifactory Discord. So preferably use topography. I have added integrated dynamics to this mod pack for a couple AND gate um, trickery that I would not like to create enormous redstone systems for, so I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm not going to use it too much, and what I can do theoretically should be doable using vanilla redstone. But that is far away. What we should do is begin. I'm going to be in peaceful mode. However, this doesn't matter too much because what I'm going to do is get to the void world as soon as humanly possible and use a couple tricks I've learned about doing Omnifactory entirely in Skyblock just by using Omnicoins. I'm making a helpful handheld crafting table from extended crafting so that I can craft in the world without having to get a crafting table and put it down yet. With fast leaf decay, leaves will decay as soon as there's not no logs nearby. Some of these leaves will not because there's logs basically everywhere, but I'll get a few and get a bunch of saplings so that I can bring them to my skyblock. In my desperate attempt to think quickly and also speak quickly, sometimes I run out of breath while talking in these shorts. The last thing I'm trying to find before I go to the void world is rubber trees, which are helpful because they'll provide us resin, which you need for basically everything. I'm making wooden shears from thermal expansion so that I can shear these sheep real quick and get enough wool for a bed. You can spot rubber wood because it has a nice reddish tint. Rubber wood will drop resin when broken. As you can see, I'm going to grab a bunch of dirt before I go so that I'll have a lot of dirt for my farms and then hopefully I won't have to go back here for any of it. Lastly, I'm looking for an integrated dynamics mineral tree. Haven't found one quite yet, but hopefully it'll come soon. If not, I'll just cheat it in. It might not spawn in this pack. No mineral in sight. Now, if you have cheats and you want to take yourself in and out of cheat mode, you can actually control click the JEI config icon in order to turn on cheat mode temporarily. Now we're going to open up the quest book for the first time and we're going to get ready to go to the void world because in the beginning of the quests, you can actually get diamond hammers and a void world and overworld cake. So I'm going to press the checkbox and press claim with no sound, unfortunately. Oh, there's one to get our Void World cake. I was hoping to place it down at the end of this path, but it's kind of asymmetrical, so it won't really work very well, so I'm just going to put it in the corner here instead, and I will take a bite from it to get teleported. There's a tree in the Void World, but we're just going to ignore that. The last thing the aforementioned Skyblock player did to make this experience possible was cheat in the materials for a cobblestone generator. So I am going to make a bunch of stone and make and get some lava and create a makeshift cobblestone generator so that I can start using it to get cobblestone. And I'll get back to you. Uh, what I'm going to do, by the way, another useful feature of JEI is to press A or the favorites button in order to move an item into your favorites. Then you don't need to search for anything, you'll just see it in your favorites tab at any time. Okay, we're ready to go. Starting to mine cobblestone. Why, you asked, would I be doing this? Well, because of the bounty board, which gets you Omnicoins for making certain objects. And some of the objects that it has you make are widgets. Wooden widgets and stone widgets are made using only stone and wood, and I can use them to get Omnicoins so I can start getting metals. The last thing I need to make these widgets viable is the tools required to make them, which is a saw and a hammer. However, according to my calculations, I can't get quite enough iron to create the hammer and the saw based on the one quest we have access to, which is the frame drawer quest. It gets us one omni nickel and you can get about 10 iron using the materials from one omni nickel. Um, so unfortunately what we're going to do is have to spawn those in and then we'll be able to um, run this with hopefully flying colors. I misrecorded it, but we just saw a bounty that was only of stone widgets. A lot of these require a bunch of different things that we don't have, but as long as the bounties show up, we can basically take them out of the bounty board, get the items into our inventory, and right-click the bounty board with the bounty. I'll show you when that comes through. With just stone widgets, it might actually be possible to pull this off without cheating, so what I'm going to do is do the framing drawer quest and get 
um, an Omni Nickel, so I'll be able to get about 10 iron to get hammers to make the stone widgets and see if I get a bounty that gets me more um, Omni Pennies. This Omni Nickel will turn into Omni Pennies, and this Omni Pennies we will turn, I believe, into Vanadium Magnetite Ore uh, with this recipe. And the Vanadium Magnetite Ore will start smelting up using our charcoal that I've made in order to get Vanadium Magnetite Dust. Vanadium Magnetite Dust I can smelt into three iron nuggets, which will get me the 10 iron I need. Now that I've got iron from my iron nuggets, or the 10 iron I expected I'd have, I'm turning 8 of it into wrought iron so that I can make it soon into a wrought iron hammer, which is made as such with 6 iron this way, 16 wooden gears, 16 stone compound gears, and with 2 stacks of stone slab, 16 up widgets, and 16 down widget parts. Finally, 16 stone widgets. After some very patient waiting, I finally have my stone widget bounty. And with the 22 stone widgets I need in my inventory, I can right-click on the bounty board to get my 50 omnipennies. Now that is one recording I cannot repeat to fix the audio quality. Sorry about that. You can turn omnipennies into omni-nickels, which will be far more useful for me, especially to get such things as iron, copper, tin, redstone, and other things I'm going to need. This is going to be fun. Let's start off with 32 iron ores so we can get the wrought iron we need for the saw. Don't mind my strange tree-cutting practices, soon I'll have enough wrought iron for a special axe that will help me to cut down lots and lots of trees very, very quickly. I'm currently smelting up the 12 iron I collected for this quest into the 12 wrought iron I also need for the quest. Using tiny charcoal, which you can make from charcoal, 8 a piece, um, tiny charcoal smelts 1 iron per piece. To get the tools I need, I need 4 wrought iron plates, a wrought iron file, a saw blade, and a saw. 32 right side wooden widget parts. 32 left side wooden widget parts, and finally, the 32 wooden widgets. The lumber axe will help us to vein mine trees. For the sake of quality of life, I will be flying like I have in my other maps with a glitch infused set of armor. All I really want to do is make factories. This is my improved cobblestone generator design that depends on my, the use of my diamond mining hammer. I simply place a diamond, a cobblestone here, I break it, and then I right click if I have the cobblestone in my um, second hand slot, and then I can just mine lots and lots of cobblestone. Some other tools, a mortar, a wrench. Iron rods are made like so, so that we can make this screwdriver. And a wire cutter, which takes a screw and some work with a file and a saw. Certain mods usually end up adding recipes to make four chests from eight wood. But why make chests when you can make storage crates? Well, they use chests anyway. But they're really big and they store lots of things in single spaces and don't have the problems of like opening up without not opening up with a block on top of it. Um, we'll see right now. We just need to make a wood casing and then turn it into a small storage crate. And if we are to place this down, we'll see that it's just absolutely full of space. As it happens, it has one more row of nine than four chests put together. Let's make a bunch of ores so we can get all of these materials. Coal ore, tin ore, copper ore, for a lot of omni nickels, gold ore, and for a way cheaper price than I thought, redstone ore. At first, uh, wires and other such things are very expensive. For example, tin wires require an entire tin plate, which is two tin. However, later we'll be able to turn one tin into two wires. I am currently making the materials to make an LVCEF, a basic mace reader, a basic lathe, a basic compressor, and a basic wire mill, which will altogether decrease my material cost for everything very quickly. These 48 tin wires are important, I promise. Iron furnaces will cook faster than normal furnaces. Copper furnaces will cook faster than iron furnaces. Here's 10 motors, the first of a bunch of things I need. Silver furnaces are faster than copper furnaces. A lot of alloys in this pack can be made by combining dust, at least while you don't have an alloy smelter. So for example, um, red alloy can be made from copper and for redstone, and conductive iron can be made from redstone and iron dust. You can get these dusts by using a mortar with an ingot. With a fair amount of microcrafting, I've created a bunch of electronic subcomponents. In fact, I've made enough for seven entire circuits, and I'm about to make them so that I can finish all of the things I need for these five machines. Behold, seven primitive circuits. Now to make LV machine holes, which require some wrought iron plates, tin cables, and uh, more wrought iron plates. Until we have access to other machines, gears are kind of annoying, but we'll fix it soon. To increase the size of wires and how many amps they can carry, combine them in a crafting table. It's time to get our five machines. The CEF, a macerator, a lathe, a compressor, and a wire mill. I'm making my first steam dynamo. Note that coils require rods as opposed to just plain ingots. 
It's a steam dynamo, also an infinite water source that we'll use to feed the steam dynamo. Pressurize fluid conduits to satisfy the quest. Anyway, now that we've gotten all this, that's it for today's episode. Next episode, I'll set up all these machines and explain GT Power, and then we're going to work through the beginning quest line in order to try and get up to the next tier of circuits so that we can start creating DML. Uh, and I know those may seem like a bunch of crazy words, but I'll explain the progression of this mod pack in more detail very soon. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.